Ever since the Sunday night when President Obama told the world of Osama bin Laden's demise, curiosity about the Navy SEALs who killed him has been insatiable. Well, now one former high-level officer is pulling back a bit more of the curtain, describing what these men go through to be called a SEAL. Here's ABC's John Donvan. This used to be something that none of us were meant to see. Much less videotape and put on television. The Navy SEALs didn't only operate in the shadows, they trained in them too. Their whole story stayed shrouded in mystery. Their secret missions stayed secret to the rest of us. But when they got Osama bin Laden, and when they're snatching back an American cargo ship captain who was taken by pirates and rescuing two aid workers held hostage in Somalia, then suddenly it's like the SEALs are headline makers. Add to that that some of them are writing books about SEAL adventures. They're coming in hot. Even Watch acting in a movie about the SEAL experience with, by the way, live bullets. That's what they used when they made Active Valor. And you just can no longer quite call them the military unit that no one ever talked about. Take Rourke Denver. He played Lieutenant Commander Rourke in Active Valor, a film that used dozens of SEALs and went on to gross $80 million at the box office. And he did some pretty decent acting. Sir, we have eight foreign nationals heading to our country. And needless to say, they are no big fan of ours. And now, with the help of a professional writer, he's doing some pretty decent storytelling in a new book called Damn Few. I just think we're at this moment in our history when the, the heat is on. The, the missions are getting press and, and coverage. Is that it's a good so thing? Little. Time will tell. I think we are in the public eye, and I think that mythology is something that people are hugely, hugely interested in, and they have an appetite for it. I had an opportunity, I feel, to, to authentically represent that and hopefully do it from an honorable point of view. It's mostly his own story he tells in Damn Few, how he joined the SEALs after college. And they didn't want you at first? They didn't. I, I put in my first application and they said no. I'm glad it went that way, you know, and I, I think the community really values um, resiliency and toughness and focus and, and a never quit attitude. So for me, um, when they said no, I said that, that isn't going to cut it. Denver did not quit. He reapplied and went on to survive the SEALs' brutal hell week in training, joined the teams and deployed all over the world, including the deadly Al Anbar province in Iraq. How is it for your family living the other side of this? The families, I feel, are the ones that pay the price of our choices. They really are every bit a part of our experience, and, and frankly, they're the ones that are back home, you know, hoping and praying and believing that you're going to come home. And really, even his family didn't quite know what he did at work every day. But the movie was revealing in that way. It was incredibly eye-opening to actually see a submarine kind of mission or running around in the jungle. For me, it was like, oh, so this is what you're doing when you're away. <laughs> I appreciated it, actually. You know who else has come to appreciate what the SEALs do? Washington, which should be a good thing for the unit, but there's a catch. Politicians are saying we should have more of that good thing, more SEALs. Not necessarily smart, says Rourke. It scares me, I mean, to be honest. We don't know if there's gonna be a dilution of the talent pool or our focus on mission sets and how that's gonna impact the team. I just think as a culture, we wanna be deliberate about how we move that forward. He's noticed, for example, that in some training exercises, guys who fail are getting more and more do-overs to try again like 10 or 12 times. I am concerned about 12 attempts to get through a program where it used to just be four. But I also was cognizant of the fact when we were going through training that one of the things that's difficult is not letting those instructors get away from um, that focus I said on, on making it harder to make it better. Usually there are about 2,500 SEALs in service. Many more than that apply and start the training, but most don't make it. So what does it take? Well, I think it's a tremendous desire to, to succeed. I think it's an absolute inability to, to quit no matter how tough things get. That's why they call themselves the damn few, a term more of us know because the SEALs are coming just that much more out of the shadows. For Nightline, I'm John Donvan in New York. Damn Few is in bookstores now and is published by Hyperion, which shares a parent company, Disney, with ABC News. Thanks to John.